Hello and welcome to the Not Lulled Firm YouTube channel. My name is Ben Banks. Today's video on Hamilton's successful search for a new head coach and Stuart Taylor. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. would be much appreciated. Didn't have any videos up last week. The last one was, of course, with Dundee v Motherwell uh, reviewing the Premier Sports Cup weekend. It's been a really busy week with Europe and a few different other bits and bobs as well. So we're back now and should hopefully be back to having two or three videos a week. So do remember to subscribe, it would be much appreciated. In terms of videos that you could catch up on the channel, probably the most recent one is Jonathan Abika's uh, interview after his move from St Mirren to Morecambe. So do check that out, and as already mentioned, please do subscribe. We are over the 800 uh, subscriber mark. We're less than 200 away from the 1,000 mark. So that's where we really want to reach some point in the sort of near future. So please do subscribe to help us reach that. In terms of Hamilton, I think Scottish football received a bit of a shot when Brian Rice resigned two games into the Scottish Championship season. He was supposedly the man to lead Hamilton back to the Premiership after relegation last season, but his announcement came at a bit of a shock. So we're going to, in this video, sort of detail the sort of process that went on, how it came that Stuart Taylor was appointed, a bit from Stuart Taylor's um, first press conference with Chairman Alan Maitland on Friday. Would have had this up on the sort of the day of it, but the turnaround that this happened was very quick. So we hope you do appreciate it coming out on the Monday, which gives us a chance to then look back on their defeat to Kilmarnock on Saturday, which gave Stuart Taylor a bit of an eye opener to what's to come uh, at the South Lanarkshire Club. So we will start. We'll go back to I think now two weeks past Friday, and um, just gone there. Brian Rice, short resignation. He'd signed a new deal towards the end of last season and looked to be the man to guide Hamilton through the championship season, what he hoped to be back to the Premiership. Resigned after two games, so a search went on for a new manager. They had plenty of excellent candidates applying for the role. Hamilton had a two-week gap in between games due to their elimination from the Premier Sports Cup at the group stages, so it did give them a bit more time to sort of gather their thoughts and see who the right man was for the job. But George Cairns, Academy director was leading the team at the weekend in the game against Kilmarnock. He took the usual press conference before the game, the usual routine that builds up to match days on a Saturday in the SPFL, and addressed rumours that Stuart Taylor was perhaps going to be the new Hamilton head coach. And he spoke long of him, Stuart Taylor, to give you a bit of background, him was a Hamilton player. He also coached the under-19s in some of the youth squads and the sort of Frankie McAvoy days of, at Hamilton a wee while ago now, certainly before my time in journalism. And he has since moved on to coaching Qatar, but perhaps most um, impressively, if you want to call it that, he has coached with Paul Lambert at a number of various clubs. He was Aston Villa under-23s head coach about seven years ago now, in 2014, I think. And he has coached at Wolves. And he has been assistant manager most recently at Ipswich Town with Paul Lambert. That was the how his relationship with him went. There was also a spell at Stoke City. Most recently, in terms of Stuart Taylor himself, he was coaching with Malky Mackay at Ross County in the Premiership. He made that move earlier this summer, but last week left due to personal reasons. And wasn't in the Hamilton head coach running until about three days before, the, before his appointment. Made the call to Alan Maitland asking if they were still going about and very quickly it became clear to Alan Maitland that Stuart Taylor was the man to guide Hamilton forward. And he has agreed a one-year rolling contract. All the same coaches have to with Boozlin and George Cairns, academy director, remain in the background and things like that. So Stuart Taylor in as head coach, knows the club and he fits the model for Hamilton, which is developing young players, hopefully for them, having them play a big part in their first team and perhaps one day having the next James McCarthy, James McCarthy type players. And Stuart Taylor was around at the time when those guys were sort of breaking through and moving on. So there is a bit of experience in that field there. So we'll cut to the press conference. Now it was Friday. They have since lost the game since then, but I think there's still plenty of decent stuff and it will not put the full thing in. It is quite lengthy, but here's the sort of highlights of what Stuart Taylor and Alan Maitland said when they addressed the media last week? Yeah, um, it's something I've always wanted to do. Um, I just feel as if part of my next part of my development was to, to go and take the 
the role as a as a manager or head coach somewhere. Um, when this opportunity came up, um, I didn't hesitate in terms of after I spoke to Ross County um, and let them know how you know how I was feeling in terms of going back to the family, which was a big thing for me. Um, I had no intentions of of um, being here while still being up there, if that makes sense. Um, I spoke to my, my family and uh, uh, spoke to the manager, Malky, up there on Tuesday and um, you know we spoke about it a lot but uh, my family were really calm for me to come back home. Really that's what the, the thing was and I took the opportunity to, to contact the club and uh, see where they were in the process if they were still looking for someone. So there's a big leap of faith I suppose you could say. I think what happened really is that Brian's looked at, since I've been the manager at the football club, Billy Reid's been here and uh, Alec neil has been here, Frank McAvoy's been here, Graham Jones has been here, obviously Chipper as well, um, and they've all done fantastically well after they've left this football club, so maybe Stuart just wants to jump in that train. <laughs> You're coming into the club in a bit of a bit of transition, just obviously going down into the championship, to get back. how big a challenge lies ahead for you here? I think it's a great challenge. Um, when you look at the way the club has always been, um, going back to the time I was here before, um, there's a real identity at the football club. Um, there's a structure to the football club in terms of, um, you know, the, the fantastic academy that they've got, and it's a great platform for to go and build on. And it's something that, that I enjoy doing um, before I came here and, and since I've been here, uh, enjoy bringing through the younger players and and. Um, and trying to progress and develop them and make them better. So, um, yeah, it, it really appeals to me. Try and be as successful as possible, and try and improve the club, try and develop the club, try and progress the club. So it's no different from what I would want to go and, to go and do anyway. Um, there's a lot of realism um, about the place, but very, very much so, very positive. Um, but um, it's been positive, being realistic at the same time. So, yeah. Do you believe that you, you could take the club back up, obviously, were in terms of last season? Is that realistic to come back on next season? Uh, well, you're putting a time limit to it. Um, <laughs> I think it's very realistic that the club will go back up. Um, it's just a matter of time, and as I said to you, I'm not looking for perfection right now, but I'm certainly looking for progression, and I'm sure we will have progression as, as time goes on. And have you had a discussion at all in terms of budget, or will it very much be continuing the active way of bringing through youngsters? But, well, why would you change something that's not broken? That's the big thing that I said. Um, certainly there might be a couple of players along the way that we need to bring in to go and help and progress the players when they're on the pitch. You can do as much training as you possibly can and give them so many ideas uh, on the training pitch and, and uh, in the classroom as well, but certainly a couple of experienced players in the right positions to go and help them come along because when they cross that light line it's really down to them and what they remember. Um, so, I mean, when I was here previously with great experienced players like, you know, your Alec Neils and Mark McLaughlin's that helped out your James McCarthy's, James McArthur's, Brian Easton's going to develop and progress into the career that they've had. So um, it's having the blend, definitely, but it's bringing the right people to the football club is the most important thing. There are some great experience since you left here in Qatar, Ireland, coaching at the highest level in the English Premier League. What's the main things you've taken away from your coaching career so far in terms of your development? There's loads, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I think it's just... Uh, it's um, me still continuing to learn, um, but passing as much information and experience on to, to players, but also coaches as well. Um, but um, no, if I just came here to try and make other people better, I've come here to better myself as well. Um, so there's, there's just a bundle load of different things over the years um, that um, has moulded me into what I am just now, and, and hopefully hopefully we, we do the right things here and, and we get success. Yeah, um, I think. And the 27, I think, written applications. We had lots of people who applied if you want or made it known that they were keen in the position if we would be keen in them. Um, I said last week when it happened that I need to take some time, get through the weekend, have a deep breath, see where it takes us. I got lots of the applications over that period. Stuart applied, I phoned me on Tuesday um, and it quickly became apparent that he was the outstanding candidate. Um, his experience and his time down south is above what we've got from most other applicants, I've got to say. But the big thing for me is the hunger that he's got, um, the desire he's got, he knows the philosophy of the club, he knows the football club, um, and the fact that he wants to come and join us, I thought was fantastic. So with two or three meetings to discuss it, um, I phoned the guys at Ross County just to make sure everything was in order with them as well, just so out of courtesy, um, and they spoke really well. So. I'm delighted, I mean delighted to, to be introducing Stuart to you today. Yes it does, 
Uh, absolutely. So there's no point in me trying to bring players in with Stuart might not fancy. So we have the, agreed that we'll re, re, revisit that next week. So I know there's not a lot of time. Timing's not fantastic as far as the transfer window is concerned, but it's good in terms of the number of players coming back from injury. So it will give Stuart the chance to evaluate where we are just now, what we have listed as our targets, and then he can evaluate it and decide what he wants to do. In terms of their game on Saturday, they lost 2-0, a bit of an eye-opener. Uh, Stuart Taylor was meant to be in the stands for that game, but ended up on the touchline for the game. He came down about 20 minutes to go. Kilmarnock already 2-0 up by that point. Scott Robinson's double seal. Pretty comfortable win for them. They're on nine points from nine. They're also looking to go back to the Premiership and they look equipped to do so. Hamilton perhaps, have, perhaps definitely a bit of work to do to get to that point. They have one point from nine, even that one point there to come from four goals down to get it away to Wake over. Since then, they've lost 1-0 to Morton. They've lost 2-0 to Kilmarnock. They really need to start picking up points from somewhere if they are to sort of avoid getting into a bit of a rut. And, of course, for them pushing towards at least the promotion playoff spots. I think it's clear in the Championship that Kilmarnock have probably got the best squad, their best equipped to perhaps win that league this season. So it will be a task, especially now trailing them by eight points at this early stage in the season for Hamilton to catch them up. But, you know, it's not impossible. We are only still approaching the end of August. I think it's clear as well that they do need some new recruits in. Up front seems to be a real problem for them. Andy Bryan puts in a shift up top, but isn't really getting any service. They do need some more attacking players in and around him up front and just some more attacking players in general, I think. As already mentioned, I think, in the video, they are going, there's going to be new transfer targets. Of course, Brian Rice is going to have identified different players to perhaps what Stuart Taylor wants. I would assume Stuart Taylor will have a decent grasp of the English market, given his extensive uh, period down there. But that remains to be seen. The transfer window does shut next week. So not a lot of time to get things around, not a lot of time to convince players of the project and things like that, but it's a completely fresh start for Hamlin. And it'll be interesting to see how they go along in the championship season. Well, we hope you have enjoyed this video. Do remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, as I've already mentioned. This week we'll have a preview of the two European games for Aberdeen and St. Johnson. Aberdeen hosting Carabag of Azerbaijan, St. Johnson welcoming LESK Lins of Austria to McDermott Park. Both sides playing for the chance to potentially play Europa Conference League group stage of football, which would be a huge boost for both clubs, both on the park and perhaps more pressingly in the current COVID-19 pandemic financially. I think it's around £3 million that these clubs get from that. So hopefully a big boost for them on the way. But in terms of this, hope you have enjoyed and until next time, take it easy.